When a person receives a great promise, he or she may feel honored. How does one respond when one has been so honored? When God promised to make him the head of a great dynasty, King David prayed a prayer of gratitude, praise, and petition. David's prayer has three movements. One, submission to God's will. Two, confession about God's person. And three, petition for God's fulfillment of his promise. David's prayer is in response to God's declaration that David could not build a house or temple for God, but that God would build a house or dynasty for David. Although previously content to inquire of the Lord through Nathan the prophet, David is so moved by God's promise to build a house for him that he does not respond to God through the prophet. Instead, he responds directly to God. And that brings us to our key verse for today, which reads, O Lord, there is no one like you. We have never even heard of another God like you. 1 Chronicles chapter 17, verse 20. David provides a great example to us of the posture that we should assume when we pray. It should be the spiritual posture of seeking God's will and then submitting it, submitting to it, even when it may not be in alignment with our desire. In the ancient world, a king would render no greater service than to build a house for his God as an act of homage to the deity responsible for establishing him on the throne. Therefore, it was natural for David to, to seek to honor his God in like manner and build a house for him. On the other hand, it was God's express desire to honor his servant by building a house for David. House is the Hebrew beit and is a key term occurring 14 times in 1 Chronicles chapter 17. David's house would be a royal house, a dynasty that would originate with David but would never end. It is important to note that the Ark of the Covenant represented the presence of God, as well as the corresponding blessings that flowed to God's people. For example, when the Ark was in the home of Obed-Edom, God blessed his household, and after installing the Ark in Jerusalem, David returned to bless his house. And now it is God who will bless the house or family of David. Similarly, when the presence of God abides fully, and freely in our homes and hearts, when we honor God with clean hands and pure hearts, when we prepare our bodies as a fit dwelling place to house the Holy Spirit, then we are in a position to receive unexpected, unsolicited blessings from the Lord. The Hebrew word for servant is ebed, and can refer to a slave, a bond servant, a subject of a king, or a worshiper. And speaking to Nathan, God referred to David as his servant twice. David willingly affirmed his role as a servant, for he was indeed a loyal subject of the true king and a true worshiper of God. This is the example we too must follow. Like King David, King Jesus willingly took on the role of servant and humbled himself by being obedient to God's will to die on a cruel cross. Therefore, all who want to be great in God's kingdom must become the servant of all. After all, the highest commendation anyone can receive from God is, Well done, good and faithful servant. David moves from talking about himself and looking inward to talking about God and looking upward. God's desire to have a people for himself is a key part of redemptive history. When God entered into a covenant with Abraham, He promised that Abraham's descendants would be his people, and he would be their God. When God came to Israel and Egypt, he promised that I will take you to me for a people, and I will be to you a God. And God instructed Israel to set up the tabernacle in the wilderness for this grand purpose, that I may dwell among them. When the tabernacle was completed, God's glory descended, and therein his sanctuary He would dwell among his people and be their God. And when Solomon completed the temple, the same Shekinah glory filled the house of the Lord. This is the grace God has granted to us to have his perpetual presence with us always. In return, our reasonable service is to honor God's presence by maintaining our temples as a fit dwelling place through worship and spirit and truth, profuse praise, and a willing sacrifice that is acceptable to him.